Hello, I'm Montgomery County Auditor Carl Keith, and welcome to another episode of Odds and Ends. Uh, we're happy to uh, have you join us again uh, for, for this month's episode. Odds and Ends is a program uh, produced by the Montgomery County Auditor's Office. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to share information not only about our office, but uh, about other things going on in the community, to, to meet people that are doing uh, wonderful things in the community and to learn more about them and learn more about some of the programs and activities that they're involved in. And, and uh, I'm very excited uh, for my guest today. I have with us today uh, Will Smith, who I've known Will for a long time uh, f from different roles. <laughs> uh, Will is a community activist uh, and currently serves as the uh, president of the Dayton School Board. And so um, let's start off by, find, by asking uh, you to talk a little bit. He, he's here today with his, <laughs> with his sweatshirt on that says product of Dayton Public Schools. So you're, you're a longtime Dayton resident and, and uh, product of Dayton Public Schools, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First off, I want to say thank you for having me here today. And yes, um, not only am I a product of Dayton Public Schools, but my mom and dad both went to Roth High School. Okay. My aunts and uncles are from Dayton Public Schools. They... They started this in me. Uh, my grandparents, they moved up from Kentucky before they started their family. And so it's just a family that has been ingrained. Mm -hmm. My father retired from Dayton Public Schools. Uh, my brother. He was a teacher? He, was a he, was, he actually was a custodian for years. Okay. And I remember even as a kid him having us on Saturdays when he would have to go in. He worked at a school called McNary. And he would be in there and just being and seeing the, the passion he had for his work the 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 dedication that he put in to his work um we've always just been part of Dayton Public Schools I remember going to the basketball and football games as a little kid I still remember getting peanuts and hot dogs with my dad <laughs> and I was like five six those are the memories I had sure going with my cousins and looking up to them so we've had a lot of family I think I've probably had a family member that has been in every school here, in <laughs> high school, that has come out of pretty much every school. So, yes, born and raised here. I actually graduated from Meadowdale High School. Okay. And you have a couple of kids in, in public schools, right? Yes, public schools, I right? have too, right? two, two in high school right now. Okay. And I have a three-year-old who, who's we'll on the way. He will right? soon be there. So <laughs> it's been an adventure. I love being able to see their growth. They've been in some excellent schools. They've had some excellent opportunities. And being able to see them grow really is a is a joy to me. Right. And, then, I mean, it goes by fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It goes by so, so fast. So, yeah, she's three years old. They'll, she'll be driving soon. Right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, um, you said your grandparents moved up here from Kentucky. Yep. See, I didn't know this. Yep. Maybe. So, now we're going to divert just a little bit. <laughs> what part of Kentucky? Owensville, Kentucky. Owensville. Right outside of Mount Sterling. Okay. Which is not far from Lexington. Okay. So uh, my family traces its background to Kentucky. Okay. Further south than that. Okay. Uh, but my family is from the southeastern part of the state, uh, Clay County, which is in the heart of the Daniel Boone National Forest. <laughs> and uh, so you go to London and then go uh, east into the mountains and you find um, a little town called Manchester, which is the county seat mm. of Clay. And to this day, the population of Manchester is 1,700 people. So, you know, it's a pretty remote part of the state. But anyway, you know, my parents uh, did probably something similar that your grandparents did, you know. After uh, World War II, they uh, hopped on uh, the Dixie Highway. There wasn't an interstate at that point right. and moved north and migrated north. Like the, that was the Great Migration from yes. the South. And uh, so I had lots of family and everything that moved up here looking for work. Uh, uh, my dad ended up going to work for Armco Steel Corporation, but you know, other uncles and things went to GM. And one of my uncle, a couple of my uncles made it all the way to Detroit hmm. and worked for Chrysler up there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting <laughs> history. It is. It is an interesting history. Um, and we're all living a part of that history, right? Uh, we do. We, I think that's, that's so interesting when you talk about like these stories, they align. You know, I had an aunt. She ended up in Detroit, so our family would be up in Detroit. Um, and when my family came up, it was my my grandfather, my grandmother, and they had their their children. And then my aunt came up. Then you know my grandfather's brother came. Like it was mm -hmm. that right? Somebody right. settles in. Hey, this is a we found a good job. He worked at Desi. Well, uh, yeah. My uh, parents, when they first moved up here, my dad's older sister, she and her husband had a place in. Um, 
outside of Hamilton in New Miami, in the little okay. village of New Miami. They, they had a home there, and so my mom and dad lived with them for a while while they built a house. And uh, yeah, so you know, I mean, so that's how it go- that's, that's how it went. went. That's how it went. And and so, so what some of the things that we're experiencing today really grew out of those experiences. Yes, definitely. Um, we. Uh, uh, you know the population of Dayton exploded during the '60s and things, but and now things have reversed. And I know those are types of issues you deal with with uh, as, as a member of the Dayton School Board and as a community activist as well. Yeah, so how do. how did you get into? I think I know from what <laughs> you just told us. How how did you? What motivated you to run for the school board? So I had a a long journey. I tell people I'm I've lived in different places in life. Um, born and raised here in Dayton. I've done so many different things. I've tried, just tried things, and I've always been interested in just the way politics move. Uh, so my dad, he was a member of the priority board. He was on okay. the priority board here mm-hmm. in Dayton. My great uncle, Elgin Kite, was over Model Cities for a while, which was a program that had some federal dollars to do some uh, work in black communities in the West Side. And so he was very fiery. He was a feisty guy. We would always argue. And then my dad got it from him. Then I got it from them. My mom, she was um, a city planner. So she worked for the city of Dayton. She also worked for County Corp. Um, So growing up, I was in these spaces. You know, growing up, I stayed in City Hall while my mom was working. I would come home from school. If she had to work late, she'd pick us up and we'd be back up there, Mm -hmm. you know, or... I was used to calling their office to say, hey, can you tell my mom I'm home? (laughs) So um, I was just in those spaces. Um, And I got involved in organizing first. Um, My biggest, 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 biggest shout out always goes to former Mayor Clay Dixon. He has been just more than a mentor, a real family friend, a father figure for years. I've grown up, grew up in his house. I was at his house, you know, on a weekly basis coming up. And so seeing him in those spaces also helped. You know, I was out with him. He would help us on things. We would help him when he was doing community things. And so that was just ingrained in me. We were just brought up, whether it be in the community, in our church, to give back. Mm-hmm. That just was something that was told to us. You give back to people. You help people out. My grandma and my grandfather, there are people I come across in the community now that just look and say, are you Charlene Razor's grandson? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, was Al Razor your grandfather? You know, my, my grandfather passed. So many people would just tell us stories about, hey, your grandma and your grandfather took me in. Your, your grandma and grandfather, you know, helped me pay for this. Mm-hmm. They helped me get my first car. They took me in when I had a baby. Wow. Like, so it was just naturally in us. And that was taught to us, that you give back. You give back more than you receive, and that's how you get your blessings. And so I worked on a couple of different projects with the Miami Valley Organizing Collaborative, which was part of the Ohio Organizing Collaborative. Then I worked with a group called, um, it just went for, it went so fast. Oh, gosh, I can't even remember what was <laughs> after it. Well, it was probably um, when you were with the organizing collaborative it was that, the, you, that you and I first met. Yep, yeah. that's what it was. It was there, and I think there we started working in different spaces. Um, and that's when I started looking at the schools. And I started seeing that where I am in those spaces just needed somebody who knew kids, mm-hmm. who had been from their walks of life. You know, I know I go to schools now and I'm, I'm looking at kids and I'm like, I know your dad. Mm-hmm, like right. without even knowing this child, I look and go like, I know your dad. I know your mom. I went to school with your cousins. I've seen these things that you've gone through. Um, then somebody who's been here and just seeing where we were. I think that's what really got me to want to run. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, for our future Ohio. Okay, yeah, I have to yeah. shout out for our future. That's who it was I worked with before then. And that's when I – then I did some work actually with some consulting work with the city. And that's – after that is when I made the decision. I said, you know what, I'm going to try to get out here. Mm-hmm. And it was – it's been a journey. Because yeah. I think the first – when I first was elected in 2019 – You're in your second term, right? Second term. Right. Mm-hmm. So 2020 came. We had our January meeting. We met in February. And I had all these ideas. I'd been going to schools, <laughs> talking to teachers, talking to staff members. 
and then March of 2020 rolls around. Right. So then everything goes into what do we do? So we're not in buildings now. We're, we're virtual now. So now dealing with an urban district, it's not as simple as saying go home and get on your laptops. Right, right. Then it's not even as simple as go home and be able to access the Internet. So there were so many things that we had to do. You know, we had buses in neighborhoods to get the Wi-Fi off that, to use as a, as a router hub I remember in remember that. I remember that. They you know, just seeing those kind of pieces and everything kind of shut down. And it was that way from, I think, March of 2020. We didn't come back to school at all that year. Then the next year, tried some things and was like, okay, we're going to start remote. And so my first year and a half of being a school board member, we weren't even in schools. Yeah. yeah. And so... Did you have board in-person board meetings? No. We, <laughs> so all, the state allowed us to then meet virtually, Yeah, which was even a, a task in itself. It was like you sitting there, okay... 5.30 comes along, let me log on, we have a board meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was a different time. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to run again is because it's like it went by so fast and there were so many things that I had in my mind when I first ran that because of COVID, because of so many things. And then not only that, you start seeing what happened after COVID. Right. Where in urban districts, you know, of I think COVID opened the eyes to a lot of things, but it really shed light on the natural disparities that have already been in urban environments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it talked about, it showed us things that we needed to talk about. It showed us where some of the gaps were. And then you created another space after COVID where just life changed. You know, you have that in different spaces. People now are, you know, I don't, I don't like this job. It's not bringing me joy. Mm. I don't want to work here anymore. <laughs> you know, it's people are going, okay, now we work virtually. I work hybrid. It's a remote role. You know, you had kids that had been at home because a parent was an essential worker, and this 13-year-old has run a household for a year and a half. Yeah, yeah back with the parents gone. Mm -hmm. And now comes into a school where they have not socialized with people. And, you know, I think that's where I saw a lot of things, even in my, my children. I think my daughter was in eighth grade when things shut down. So when things go back, she's now a sophomore in high school. Right, right. And you're trying to get people to get adjusted to being a sophomore in high school when the last time they were in a building, they were in eighth grade. So they'd have to, uh, they just don't, getting to know their friends again. Getting to know friends, understanding how things move. You know, you had fifth graders that come back and now they're in middle school now. Right. And, you know, you have kindergartners left. Now they're supposed to be in second grade. You know, it's so many pieces that happened that now just added on to that. But I think where we are now is it gives us space to really be creative. We have to be creative. We have to look at the data and make decisions based on what the data is showing us. We did learn some things yes. uh, from, from COVID. Uh, you know, and everyone's uh, situation environment is different. You know, really, you're causing me to, to think about, oh, you know, the public school system is a whole different uh, ball game trying to deal with remote learning and and now getting them back in the classroom uh, so we all had to kind of rethink what we do mm -hmm. and it's caused us now to rethink what we do now I you know one of the most difficult things for us from for my office is uh, you know we, we have openings uh, at work and you know one of the first things people ask is well can I work from home well no, <laughs> well, no we don't do that you know I mean, we, we did it for a while right. the best we could but you know no we don't do that and and uh, again you know public schools it I don't know how you do that you know mm -hmm. you, you you did you had to do it for a year yeah. year and a half two almost two years almost two years and I think that's a it shows in what comes back where a lot of education and a lot of good education is built off relationships. Right. And I think that was the hard, that was the harder part going into starting a school year remote when students have brand new teachers. You know, when March 2020 hit and we just had to stop things, a lot of those students were still dealing with the people they had relationships with. Mm -hmm. It's going into that next year where now I could have. Been, I might have been in eighth grade when the year stopped. I might have been in sixth grade when it stopped. Now I'm in a different school, or because I'm in a different grade, I have different teachers now. 
and now I don't have the ability to talk to people, different classmates. You know, there's so many things where if there's an issue at home, now how do I talk to somebody about it if I'm home all day? Right, right. Or if there's just, I I have three or four brothers and sisters and we're all trying to be on online doing classes (laughs) at the same time. And I have a third grader who's here and I'm trying to help them. There's so many things. Well, that's another uh, issue, um, broader issue, uh, is access to the Internet yes, and, and yes. broadband and, and because that's become such a big part of our lives now. And if you don't have that kind of access and you don't have, you know, access to technology, you, you, you're behind on things. You can't do certain things. And, right. And so that's, that's a whole other issue. So now we've moved past that. What are some of the things you're most excited about going on Dayton Public Schools right now? Well, first, I'm glad you said move past in a way because I always tell people now, one of the most dangerous things we can do is get caught up in just this period of time. And I get learning the lessons. You have to learn the lessons, but sure. we cannot stay in this. No, you know, can't stay We there. always say this post-COVID this world, this mm-hmm. po- which always keeps us pulled back. Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad you said moving forward, there are so many things that we have to do. I'm excited, honestly. One of the things that I loved doing when I first got on the board was going and talking to people because it was it was something I hadn't seen a lot of, and I get it. People are different people. They come from different walks of life. Me, that is what I do. As an organizer, I'm, that's what I learn from. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to see what's going on, talking to people, saying, okay, what do we need? You know, looking at some of the things we've done, like Meadowdale, where I went is now uh, uh, our second CTC school. So being able to put those programming pieces in there, working to, to put some of the, the STEAM programs back into Thurgood Marshall. It was once Thurgood Marshall STEM, now we're looking at putting some STEAM things there. Looking at just being able to find how do we improve the offerings for our children. You know, I look at our schools and say, you have to create experiences that make children want to be there. You know, that's that's that piece. My son is at Stivers, and he plays the piano. Okay. And so um, he learned how to play the piano, and even with <laughs> he's learning, he learned virtually oh, some wow. of it. Wow. But seeing that this was a child who never played the piano before, I think he picked up in around fifth grade, never played before. Now he's a freshman. So no matter what's going on in his school life, there's something every day that he's going to go to school and thoroughly enjoy. Mm-hmm. And I believe that is what you need for every child. Does he play like in the school band? He's, no, he's, school, so he's, school he, orchestra plays, he plays in their piano magnet. Oh, wow. Okay. So he, he has his recitals. He lo- like, I mean, he just loves those recitals. He just came to me yesterday and talked about he's doing a, a, a dual performance with one of his, his best friends. Mm-hmm. And he said, he's like, hey, the band's getting back together. <laughs> the <again."> band's <laughs> together. <laughs> but like having a child be able to do that. Yeah. And so that's what we've been looking at, um, seeing how we've brought back the Student Senate. You know, even on our board now, there's a young gentleman from Meadowdale who sits up there. That's student, great. That's great. And they meet, and, you know, they've been able to do their things. So it's all about just adding programming for me. And then also adding programming that finds ways to bring out the talents in our staff. Because I think Dayton Public Schools, the staff that we have go above and beyond the call of duty on a daily basis. So many people do so many things in our district. Um, that's one of the things that I was glad we started doing is really spotlighting our staff. You know, there's so many things there, and it by doing that, you start seeing where are the gaps. And I think that's the biggest thing I've seen are where are the gaps. We're working on a project now to create a new transportation center to make it you know a better place for our transportation drivers. Mm-hmm. Well, all you heard the last few years are buses don't run on time, buses <laughs> this and that. Mm-hmm. But nobody... Well, I can't say nobody. Many people do not dive into the weeds of that, which I understand. Like, even as a parent, I didn't always dive into these things. So another reason why I like being on the board is you can have those conversations. But then I also understand every parent doesn't want to dive into that. Yeah, right. They just want buses to be they on time. They just want the buses to be on so time. So then it's, incumb- it's in- important to us to say how do we make that happen while having conversations with people to say, okay, this is some of the th- these are some of the things going on. You know, we have to do so many things based on things that come down from the state. But working with our staff, we've improved tremendously with our transportation. And that's why I'm glad to have this new transportation center be done. Um, Welcome Stadium. Yeah, let's talk about Welcome Stadium. That's been 
Well, that was something that I really, really wanted to do. Um, well, you've done a multi-million dollar renovation there. It has. It's And there we still have some plans. We have some yeah. plans to add a few more pieces. You should look out for that. Okay. But, <laughs> but um, yes, everything has been touched up above and below. Uh-huh. You know, the, the, the field, the track, the bleachers, the press box. There's um, the concourses now have uh, old trophies and remnants from our past. Nice. Because I look at Welcome Stadium and all of our buildings outside of Stivers are new. Mm-hmm. Um, and relatively new. And we've had so many schools that have closed. So there are people in Dayton, and not, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to be an older person in Dayton. You can be somebody in your 30s in Dayton. And there's no school still standing that you went that to. That you went to. Mm-hmm. Some of them aren't even in existence in new buildings now. Yeah. So that's something that I, I wanted to preserve. So if you go into Welcome Stadium, there's pennants from. All of the old high schools. Oh, that's neat. So you can go in there and see, okay, I went to Roth. There's a banner from Roth. Here's some pictures and trophies from Roth. Mm-hmm. Here's some things from Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. You know, being able to say, here's something from when Kaiser was a high school. Uh, you know, Colonel White. And that adds to that. And there's so many other things now that I wanted to put in there. And I think what started it first was I went over and started looking for things. Because I like talking to people. And people would say, like, hey, you know, there was this bear at Roosevelt. I was like, started asking around the old timers. Like, hey, I heard there was a bear. And somebody goes, yeah, it's in this cabinet back here. We oh. have it locked away in storage from this and that. Because with government, things happen. And, you know, right now, I could go get a job, say, in Colorado. I'm not on the board anymore. So mm-hmm. if I don't have plans laid out and people are following it, then it just goes away. Right. And so that's what happens a lot of times. A school gets knocked down. You get new board members, new staff, new superintendents, new things. Mm-hmm. So somebody just puts something in storage. And, and so we they found don't have the connection to it. Don't have the connections to it. So we found so many pieces from old buildings. Mm-hmm. Started just hey, let's put this on display. Let's start putting these things on display. So we actually part of the renovations was to build uh, cabinets and trophy cases to okay. put these things in, so somebody could come to Welcome Stadium and and see their history. We also put yeah, the a, put history a of the shop. school. History of the schools and Dayton is, is the history of Dayton. It's the history, history of Dayton. Dayton, and it's such a beautiful history. You know, you've seen so many things. I think a lot of people don't even Welcome Stadium. People go, "Well, why is it called Welcome Stadium?" Is it because <laughs> it was like, no, that was the the gentleman's name, who who was basically the, our, our athletic director at that uh-huh. time. But he also was the same person who put Dunbar into the city league. So he integrated Dayton Public Schools Athletics League. And so those are those kind of pieces where it's like those are the stories that need to be lifted and putting in a spirit shop and putting in these pieces where now this year we have the state track meet coming. Yeah. Which then not only benefits us, but helps the community. People coming in, hotels, restaurants, those kind of things. Well, it's a real community asset. Yes. And and it's such a visible community asset. Like, yeah. People say welcome stadium. It's like well, welcome to Dayton. You know, yes. that's one of the first that and uh, UD Arena. The you know, first things you see is you're pulling. And it used to. You can be honest, Carl. It used to look so drab next to UD Arena. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I like well, the it. whole area. You know, there was a time when that whole, that I'm whole old area. Enough to, but that whole area looked pretty drab. And I think there's so many things now. <laughs> you come off of 75. You've got Caroline. Mm-hmm. You've got UD Arena. You've got Welcome Stadium. Even the between baseball there, field. the baseball, baseball field, field there. And so now you have. <laughs> that growth of that area you mm-hmm. have then that growth where edgemont can benefit mm-hmm. you right. have that growth where you're looking at ud arena has the state high school meet mm-hmm. i mean high state high school tournament finals right now next door is going to be the state track meet this year like looking at this piece we've had we had playoff football games there for the first time in years so those kind of things that put positive eyes on our community it allows our kids to come see it we even had cincinnati molar come up to play Cincinnati St. X. So to have two Cincinnati teams travel up here to Dayton and spend that money here is a beautiful thing. They do a lot of, uh, um, uh, I know at UD Arena, but I think at Welcome Stadium too, uh, high school graduations. Yep. High school graduations uh, from communities south of town. And 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 there's uh, so many things that we can do there. Yeah. Well, you know, my staff put together an outline of some things we could talk about and so uh, we've got about we've got through about a third of it uh, <laughs> it happens but so you know I'm, I'm going to ask you if you can come back again 
and, and we can talk some, some more about some of the – because I, there's some things here that I do want to talk about with you that, that we didn't get to. But one thing I do want to, to bring up is this, uh, this new uh, nonprofit that you're involved with, uh, In Power. And awesome. So can you talk about that just a little yes, bit? Yes. Because I, I know that's important to you. It is. So In Power is a national nonprofit. Okay. It started in the late 1990s um, just to really provide assistance and – help for tech companies and find, provide training for employees. Then it grew into actually doing full-fledged training for folk and then helping them find placement. And now it's grown out of being started in New York. It's in New York, New Jersey, California, Texas, Missouri, um, North Carolina, Detroit, um, multiple cities. Mm -hmm. Dayton is actually the first smaller city that okay. we're in. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we offer free tech training for 18 to 26 year olds, as well as military folk and their spouses. So in this training program, not only are you able to obtain different certifications, which you know in the tech world now, it's, it moves with, you have to have these certifications right. to show that you, right. you can do these jobs. Mm -hmm. And it, More important than a degree. Yes, you have, mm -hmm. so being able to get these key certifications, um, not only that, we do professional development. So we're developing skills, we're doing resume workshops. We do um, mock interviews. Tomorrow we're actually going to have some people from the community come in and help our trainees do mock interviews. We, we take field trips. We go, we're going to visit a couple of companies coming up soon. Um, and so these folk get a well-rounded education, tech education, but then just skill-based, learning time management skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then also on top of that, we have a social support role there who then helps them with just some of the barriers in life. Right. So when you, you can take somebody in our community, and it's, it's like we talk about people come from so many different backgrounds, and we're able to take this person, give them a tech education, give them skill-based training, give them some professional development, and then personal development, which is all fine in itself, but the, the, the kicker there is that after they get through that, they're now Empower alumni. Okay. And when they're Empower alumni, we also work with them for job placements. So that's the beauty is that we go through – do the training. Do the training, get them ready, and then and find get them a place for jobs. Well, that's great. And so, so they how can, can they connect with Empower? You can go to Empower.org. It's okay. in power, N P O W E R dot org, and you can apply. Okay. We actually have a new cohort coming up in the next month, and then we'll have another one in August. So yes, you can go on Empower.org, get that application there because we we definitely see how it can transform our community by giving people higher paying jobs, mm -hmm. giving them that freedom that they might want to go on to a higher education, helping veterans who are coming out and transitioning into new roles, helping the spouses of our military folk who are trying to, you know, go into a, this new tech future we have and just seeing all the tech pieces that are coming to our region. It's, it's amazing to be able to be in a professional space to help train up people so that when these tech jobs come here to the Dayton region, we're saying here, we have employees that and are ready, ready and certified and, and ready certified and, and trained and ready to be professional members. And, and it's beneficial to our community on so many sides, from the business side, but then also as a school side. Mm -hmm. Because if we have more parents that have higher paying jobs, have more time to spend with children, have more time to take some of those burdens of poverty off of their backs. Right. So it goes around and helps everybody. That's wonderful. Again, you have to promise me that you'll come I back. Will. You I will. I will. have to promise to come back because we have so much more that we wanted to get into. So, But thank <laughs> you so much. This has been fascinating. Oh, thank uh, you. And uh, we're really happy that you would join us. Uh, will Smith uh, from the Dayton School Board and In Power and a number of other things, right? Yes, sir. And he's a community activist uh, here for a long time. Lifetime resident. Big yes, family sir. and presence in the community. and. We're just proud of him, proud of what you do, and uh, appreciate, appreciate you that. being here. And he's going to come back. Oh, he's I definitely come am. Back. I am. So uh, thank you all for joining us for another episode of Odds and Ends, and we'll see you next time.